And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hook up. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup, and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best. Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod, Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray with Rock Cod, Rick Maxa. We're in the world headquarters of Let's Talk Hookup here right next to the busy San Diego landings right here in Point Loma. We have a great show for you today from Captain Clowers Charters. We have Captain Al Clowers and Captain uh, Jeremy Wright. We're going to have a great time here talking to, or, or Ray, excuse me. Uh, we're going to get that name right. I yeah, promise. We'll yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're having a great show here. We're going to have a good time talking about lake fishing, bay fishing, offshore fishing, and bluefin tuna fishing. So you stay tuned. This is Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. Let's Talk Hook Up on the Let's Talk Hook Up app and the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it. So what's holding you back? It's a fact. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. Fishdope.com is for everyone. Whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat, or a Sport boat. Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use the special code to save $20 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. The future comes standard at your San Diego County Ford dealers, so swing on by and check out the legendary Ford F-150, the smart and capable Ford Ranger, and the all-new Ford Bronco Sport. New inventory is arriving daily, and your San Diego County Ford dealer is here to help you build and order the truck or SUV of your dreams. Want to make sure you get the right truck to tow your boat? They'll help you order the right configuration to meet your needs. Want to make sure you get the right SUV to haul your gear on your next adventure? They've got you covered there, too. Escape, Edge, Bronco Sport, Explorer, and Expedition. They've got the SUV that's perfect for you. If it isn't on a lot, they'll order it and get you exactly what you need. They want your trade, so swing by your nearest San Diego County Ford dealer or visit buyfordnow.com to see all the great deals. They'll be glad to hook you up. Welcome. Welcome back. Let's talk. Hook up, man. Today's gonna be a fun show. I haven't talked talked to Al in a long time. Yeah, this is gonna be great. Captain Al. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, and you brought your uh, right co-captain hand. here, <laughs> yeah. your right hand man, Jeremy Rake. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, guys. Hey, great to have you. So, what the heck do you guys do? Everything. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, really do do everything. Yeah, <laughs> you catch them all. Yeah. Right. You don't well, leave anything uh, for question. Right. Just go. go. Coming into the, the months ahead, we basically target offshore fishing, you know. Yeah. Um, springtime, um, I'm doing a bunch of guide trips, um, and then the bay trips, we do them all year. But mainly, we're we're uh, ramped up right now for, for fishing offshore. Offshore. Sure. But, but you do uh, a lot of bay trips. You'll even take people out to lakes, catch, you were a professional bass fisherman at one right, time, right? I was for, I did a lot of tournaments, you know, for yeah. many, many years, you know, and, and uh Anymore, I only do those pretty much in the springtime, you know? Yeah. Um, during but, the spawn or whatever. Right, during, you know, when they're biting real good. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, bay fishing. Um, do some bay fishing. What's bay fishing been like? Bay fishing's been okay, you know? It's, we're just behind the moon right now, so the tides are a little slow. It's a little slower the last couple of days, but it, um, it's all tidal. You yeah. Know? But the bay bites all year, you know? Yeah. Families and kids, you know, I have the little 18-foot stringari skiff for that, and... Uh, 
the bait trips are good, you know. It's cool. It's cool taking little kids out there and catching their first fish or moms and families, you know. It's it's basically a kiddie trip. We light line tackle on a spinning rod with 15-pound test and a Berkeley gulp and get it done. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty That's cool. cool. But what a perfect trip for that. You know, it's going to be calm water. Don't got to worry about getting seasick. They're... They're quick hit in, catch a bunch of fish, back off the water. Nobody's getting bummed. I mean, what a fun trip that's got to be just right, to run. Like, right. You know, there's a bit, in the summertime, there's a lot of days where the string guard, you know, when it gets busy, these guys do. Jeremy mainly runs the Riviera now. You know, sure. it took some years to get him into that spot, you know, and, and I'm blessed to, to have him because he, he does he, yeah, does, he, man, yeah. he does everything for me when I need him. But he mainly runs the Riviera now, so he'll take the Riviera, Jason takes the black men, and then I'll roll in about 6.45 and do a little bait trip. <laughs> Gentleman's <you know>? hours. <laughs> yeah, every that's day. That's what I'm you know? supposed to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, right, right. So, 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 Jeremy, you, you, you're the guy behind all those bluefin tuna you've been catching, <laughs> huh? Yeah, that Captain Al's been taking credit for. Oh, yeah, I caught a bunch of bluefin. I was like, Jeremy's catching yeah. them. Yeah, anytime, right? any, anytime he says we caught a bunch, that's really he's just saying Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy caught those. Yeah, yeah. so uh, tell us about the Riviera. Yeah. Um, well, we just got it repowered here off season. Uh, went up a size on the Cummins up to the 420 QSP. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to be able to cover it a lot more water this year. Um, a lot more efficiently. Yeah, a lot yeah. more efficiently. And, you know, with the, the last couple of years, we've been kind of running it you know just getting through with those motors taking care of them and uh it's gonna be nice kind of light it up uh, that's cool. and not have to, to turn a hand turn a, a screwdriver or anything every time you go out right yeah exactly yeah, yeah they, you know they work. were actually in really good shape it was just those smaller motors you know with the fuel efficiency and things we couldn't really put the hammer down on it yeah. um but it's, it's gonna be nice it's gonna be a little game changer this year i think it'll, that's cool. like i said cover a lot more water uh, we'll be passing the sport boats this year instead of riding in their wake. The so. boat looks like it, but what what kind of speed does a boat like that make? I mean, it's beautiful. And it looks like a little you know battleship. I mean, it's really cool. I mean, full load, six guys, bait, everything. We'll cruise at 16, 18 knots. Whew. Nice. <laughs> and and cool. you have a swimming pool for a bait tank on that thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a big, it's, big bait tank. Yep. Yeah, we we go heavy on the bait or the tuna. So that's awesome. So, um, so tell us about that Riviera, which is kind of your main thing that you guys do in the in the summer for chasing bluefin. It's a right beautiful, it's beautiful. boat. Right. So right now our mainstay with those new motors and stuff are going to be twelve hours at eighteen knots. You know, beautiful yacht basically. Yeah, it's thirty six. <clears throat> uh, thirty six foot. Thirty six R- tournament R- Riviera. Tournament Riviera, which is a bigger cockpit. Yeah. Okay. It's got the inch and three-quarter inch uh, aftermarket bow rail, massive bow, bow rail on it, bow bait tank, yeah. bait tank in the back, mackerel tubes if you want to go marlin fishing, Jeez. which we don't use too much, and, 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 and it has a CH270 in it. Oh, it's got a sonar. A sonar. Yeah, sure. Side scan cool. sonar. So it's, yeah, it, yeah. it's dialed in. That's a game changer. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Alan, when Al, Al and I went fishing at El Capitan on uh, Monday, and he was talking to me about the, how that side scan sonar changes the game. I was like, how can I put one of those in a oh, real no, reason? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, that's a game changer. You yeah. Know? It's a game changer. Yeah. For sure. it's, it's for sure. So it, that, that's what finds, especially offshore for bluefin, right? Oh, yeah. That saved my day plenty of oh, times. I can't imagine. Yeah. It's, that's just cool. Get on the fish. And so what's amazing to me, too, is that your charter prices are so reasonable, for too. For real. I mean, right. I, have really them, I have them right now. They're not going to stay like that. All summer, but for right now, there there's there's lows they can go right now. Yeah, which is what uh, full day right now. I have advertised for twenty seven hundred bucks. Twenty seven hundred bucks on the yeah on the, on the Riviera on, on the Riviera, yeah. and that's up to six people. That's only going to last to the end of May, and then it's going to go to twenty nine or thirty two. Yeah, but if you book now, you book right, at twenty seven right. and you book in now prime yes, times. Sir. Yep. Yep. Holy mackerel! Yeah, that's, now, that's really good. That's a. I mean, check around, ladies and gentlemen. That's a, like a really good deal. I mean, I don't know how you afford to do that, but right. but it's it's a good deal for a really nice boat and guys that catch them. So tell us about your season last year, Jeremy, catching those chasing those tuna. That was it was a good one. Um, you know, it started out really good. That early stuff was great. It was real close. You know, we're getting them just outside the nine a couple trips. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I was caught. I had a couple rockfish trips, half days, where we ended up getting bluefin. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's fun. That's cool. always, a, always a cool bonus fish, you know. Um, then that stuff moved out to Tanner, uh, and that was a little outside of our day range. Uh, you know, it was a day and a half for us to get on that. So uh, we had a couple out there, but for the most part, we stayed on the, the 12-hour program. Mm-hmm. So we had some really good Dorado hits there for a little bit. The yellowfin fishing was 
a little scratchy. Pretty tough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, it, it was weird. It's kind of show up for a day or two. It looks like it was going to start to go, and then they disappear. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and then throughout the season, we'll sprinkle in those three-quarter days. You know, we get a lot of people out of town. I go down to the islands, so go fish the yellows. The calico bite was really good. Um, yeah. So and, and so your trips, um, uh, Captain Clowers, are kind of all-inclusive? Yeah, they include everything but your license, lunch, and your beer. There you go. We bring some beers, we put them in our coolers, your lunch, and bring whatever license we determine you need for the day, and we're good to go. Ice, hey. tackle... Everything. Yeah, I just tackle everything and on the river. You show up, got a coffee. You know, we got some Danishes. You got plenty of snacks, waters, soda. Nice. That's cool. And also on the trips, you know, we just don't do up to twelve-hour days. We, you know, we sprinkle in some overnights and some day and a halfs in there. You know, we don't, we, don't, we don't do a whole lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But but it, we, when we do those, we only advertise five people because of the sleeping sure. uh, s- sleeping arrangements. So if you're looking for. A, uh, you know, upper class type sport. You know that that boat's best in a class in San Diego for no sure. Doubt. And, and uh, it's really nice. And right now, I got the prices low, so I want to get them all moving. That's cool. Yeah. And tell us about the bay fishing too. I mean, the, you've got a couple of boats that do bay and, and right. shore fishing. Right. right. Yeah, you, Clowers has a fleet. It's like, yeah, he's got the whole <laughs> fleet. Right? It's the admiral. Yeah. Yeah. The wife's like, "Where are you going? I'm going to this boat to do this <laughs> on a daily basis, pretty much." But no. Uh, on the bay boat, I have a, a really cool factory-made 18-foot Stingari skiff with the outboard bracket with a 130 Honda on it. Really, re- really efficient for doing the bay trips. And um, it takes up to four people, sometimes five. I mean, I think has all kinds of room for just fishing. Yeah, it's a big skiff. But the bay fishing's good, you know. Ma- mainly, we've been fishing the front, you know. Uh, well, I'd say the middle of the bay, from downtown to like the pier, uh, Shell Island Shel- Pier. Um, on the right tide, good sand bass fishing, pretty much always good spotty fishing, a little bit of halibut fishing, and now's the time to kind of start fishing the back. I don't go back there too much anymore now that I'm way up at Marina Cortez, but um, the fishing in the back can be phenomenal for the corvina and the bay sharks and the bat rays and the leopards and all that stuff. I mean, I have a bone fish. Bone fish. I have a spot back there. Last year I was anchored up and a guy was on a 100 pound bat ray and the kids were on bonefish and we caught like 20, 24 bonefish and That's like so seven, eight sharks and like a two. Because you have a really small win- window because of the tide. Uh-huh. Tide's got to be ripping either in or out because they anchor and the boat has to be really still for those bay sharks. So. That's cool. And you gotta, it's all timing, you know, water temperature, tide, the whole deal, but it's fun stuff. But how cool to go back there on a short trip and pull on big fish, whether it's a shark or a ray or whatever. I mean, you're pulling on things that are ripping a bunch of drag off the reel and lots right. of action. Right, mainly the kids, you know. Yeah, you catch totally. a bunch of spotties, hey, yeah, look at the situation, and if the... If everything's right, I'll tell them, hey, you want to go get a shark? That's cool. like, yeah, you take them back there and just put three rods in the holder and boom, you know. <laughs> that's so but, cool. you know, that's cool. So but we yeah. do anything from getting kids stoked and excited and their first fish to getting yeah. adults, professional people excited and stoked on bluefin, yeah. you know. So, and everything, the bluefins. And everything yeah. in between, you know, with the lake and, you know, really I have four boats because I have the 20-foot ranger too. So, yeah, um, yeah that's a lot of... Uh, you know, when these so guys <laughs> when these guys start working for me, it's like you know, um, Jeremy grew up here all his life, so he knows a lot of stuff that I know, you know. But some of the other guys, they're like, man, there's a lot, there's a lot, a to, lot know. to this. Yeah, yeah, you need to spend a couple of days with me in the bay, and I got to show them what's going on. So. Yeah. But, so, do you take a lot of kids out on the on the Riviera, Jeremy? Yeah, we get a lot of family trips. Yeah, we did oh, a lot cool. of out of towners, so we get yeah. a lot of families. Um, you know, I get kids out on the overnights in the day and a half sometimes. Nice. So, you know, I. My son, he's well, he's 16 now, but kind of brings back memories of when I was driving him around in my skiff. I'd take all his little buddies fishing in the bay a lot when they were little. So fun! It's it's pretty exciting. Some of those kid trips are some of my favorite trips. Yeah, uh, it, it's great to see the looks on their faces. And the funny thing to me is, there's certain kids they just have that drive that the fish. It, kids that have never fished before. You know, you have two a brother, two brothers, brother sister, whatever, and one of them just has that stoke and. Even though they've never done it before, they get a fish, and that's all they want to do, and that's all they talk about. And then other kids, you know, they're not so into it. But yeah, um, 
Those are some of my favorite tricks. That's cool, that's yeah. Cool. What's it like getting a kid on their first tuna fish, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's a pretty exciting one right there. Like, well, eyes wide I, open oh, when that thing starts ripping drag? Yeah. we had I had one last year. Kid was about, I think he was eight or nine years old. Never been on the ocean before. And he got one just right at about 100 pounds on the troll. Oh, and gee. He, he, had a little, he had a little help from dad. but uh, Yeah, I would say that must have been cool. a proud, proud father and son moment there. Yeah, it was a good one. It was fun. That was yeah. probably one of the highlights of the season last year for That's me. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I would say so. What about the third boat? I know there's another boat that like somehow falls uh, below because that Riviera is so beautiful. But that black one that you guys have, that, that's one of my favorite local nice boats boat. ever made, especially the... Uh, the way you guys have her set up, right? So the Blackman, yeah, it's uh, it's, and they only made three of those a year, you know, for I don't know how many years, but not too many. I mean, you, you, there's not too many of those boats around. It's the Twenty ba- twenty six Blackman, yeah, it's the Outer Banks, not yeah, yeah not, yeah, the, it's Bill not, not the Bill Fisher, not the Bill Fisher's the Outer Banks, and and uh, which is a pilot house which, as opposed to which a is a bridge, full right? pilot house, yep, oh. full pilot house, and it's got the little forty one Volvo diesel in it with a dual prop on it, and it gets really good fuel mileage, and the range on that thing's pretty far. Yeah, it's a really cool it, boat. It has a 160 gallon fuel tank, and um, it's, it, it's set up big, big, big time to fish. You know? cool. And you'll take that offshore, inshore, right. islands yeah. mostly. Right, right, yeah. islands offshore up to 12 hour trips. I have on that boat. Wow, um, you know that thing cruises about 16 knots. Nice. You know? And Man. what and what do you charge a day for that for a day trip? On 19.95 for a full day. Oh my god, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, now that means you, you you have to drive it yourself, right? Do you get a captain too? Well, you get bait. It, it all it all depends. You who get runs fuel it. on that price too. <laughs> yeah. You don't you don't you, you don't get co- you don't get coffee and danishes and soda. You get water and ice on that. Boat. Well, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. But you get fuel and a captain right, and the whole and right, tackle and right. everything. Yeah. Sometimes they want to run it by themselves. Sometimes they'll put a guy on it with them. You know, it, it all depends what we're doing. If we're yeah. fishing big bluefin and stuff, I'll put a guy with the guy. You know, but yeah. the guy. You mean you'll put a deck hand with the right, captain? Okay, right. Yeah, not, not not like the guys running them themselves, like they take the right, boat out. You just mean right. captain will always be there, but if the right. scenario is right, there might be a crew member right. as well. And these guys like to run it by themselves. Yeah. But, um, you know, when you're fishing that big stuff, it's always have, good to have a, a good bluefin pinhead with them or yeah. a deck hand, actually. Oh, so you're on the black one, you'll chase bluefin, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's got, that thing's got a two-ton fish hold in it. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's a cool boat. So, yeah. I love that. Uh, Jeremy, you t- do you take a deck hand, too? Oh, yeah. On the, yeah. Yeah, the Riviera, I always have a deck hand. I always there. have a deck hand. Yeah. So. Occasionally on a bay trip, sometimes, especially if it's repeat customer, somebody I know or something, we might, we might run it solo, but... Uh, yeah, I'd say 99% of the time I got a deckhand with me. It's, kind yeah. of a, it's a big boat to run single handed. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, right now, our deckhand is Charles Bauer. CB is a really good guy, older uh, guy, and, and uh, just very, very detailed oriented and a very good manner. Yeah. And, yeah he, he, and he keeps my boat real clean. That's cool. That's a good thing. That's well, awesome. As yeah. you can hear, we have a great, great show lined up for you today. A lot to talk about between uh, inshore, offshore, uh, all that good stuff yeah. here. They've got it all covered. People throw that word around all the time, but it is the truth. You want to talk about guys that do everything, this this do is it. that. Green yeah. bass, bay mm-hmm. bass, calico bass, white sea bass, I mean, everything. It's going to be a great show. And super stoked to have Jeremy in here, too. You know, the brain's behind the operation. It's right now. I'm just kidding. We're going to have a great time today. If you want to join us, man, we want to hear from you. Give us a call this morning at 213-432-1090. Again, 213-432-1090. That's your reaches here on Let's Talk Hookup. Or send us a text. Text the show has become a huge popular uh, option here on joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. To do that, it's only available through the Let's Talk Hookup app. It's not like a normal text where you just send it to a phone number. Uh, download the app. It's totally free. There's no BS. There's no spam that hits you. It's just a, a great way to be involved in Let's Talk Hookup. When you do that, you'll see the text the show option, and that'll uh, set you up to text your questions in to, to Jeremy and to Captain Al. Uh, have your questions, send them away, and all of those that get read are going to be eligible for a great prize. The way we do the prize at the end of the show today is we take all of the callers and make it on the air, all the texts get read on the air, we'll draw a, a winner from each column, and then we'll flip a coin to determine who's going to get that big prize. So, With that said, if you send us a text, make sure to include your contact info so we can get you back. We have that happen at least once a show, a great text that will really add to the show that we want to read, but uh, there's no contact info added, so we uh, we got to have that so we can get you your prize. And speaking of prize, what a cool one today. 
Kind of in celebration of having our uh, private boat guys on today, we have a full AFCO fish care package. And it includes an AFCO Boker fillet knife, um, that great AFCO uh, knife case, and one of those AFCO fillet gloves. So a really cool. And that is that knife case oh, is really fishy. cool. Yeah. You yeah. carry them in and the shop. Boker, They're really cool. And those Boker fillet knives, it's amazing. Just, it's just a great way to keep every, I mean, you're making an investment in a tool like that, and it's a cool kit that houses everything, keeps it all together, pockets for the gloves. Yeah. Um, um, you know, if you get into doing the EKG May and you know fish wire, there's pockets for all. It's just a right. really cool kit. To, Got it all there. Yeah, we're stoked. I have to one get, on my boat. They're <laughs> awesome. Yeah, stoked to get uh, to give one away again to one lucky caller two one three four three two ten ninety or one of the texters to the Let's Talk Hookup app. And we come back. We're gonna be taking those phone calls, reading those texts, and getting you catch reports. You stay tuned. It's a great Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. Southern California Sport Fishing Voice on the Let's Talk Hookup app or the mightier ten ninety ESPN Radio. When you want to catch big bluefin tuna. You need Shimano. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. The Shimano Beastmaster is the pinnacle of electric reels. Shimano's Gigamax motor packs a winding strength up to 250 pounds, ideal for kite fishing and more. Shimano's butterfly flat fall jigs are irresistible to bluefin tuna because they stay in the strike zone longer. Shimano makes a complete line of butterfly flat fall jigs to target your favorite game fit. For all your Shimano needs, visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet. Fisherman's Landing offers half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day trips on the Liberty. Many trips can be easily booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Let's talk candidly about long range fishing. This is Captain Frank Capresti of the Royal Polaris and the Shogun. Nowhere on earth will you find a fleet of long range boats like we have in San Diego. We are fortunate to have several top notch operations to take you to the most productive fishing grounds in the world. We all offer good food, comfortable staterooms, huge bait capacity, and top of the line fish finding electronics. So why would you choose the Royal Polaris or the Shogun for your next long range trip? What sets us apart from the rest? It's pretty simple. The boats, the crew, and the service. From the moment you arrive at Fisherman Landing, your service begin. We help you load your gear and do everything possible to get beginners or seasoned veterans ready to catch fish. When it's time to fish, the Royal Polaris and the Shogun have the edge there too, delivering the two best fishing platforms in the fleet. But don't take my word for it. Come fishing with us. If you want the best, it's Royal Polaris and the Shogun. For more information, call 619-226-8030 or on the web at royalpolarissportfishing.com or shogunsportfishing.com. For quality, the Islander out of Fisherman's Landing is a favorite among anglers. But Islander Charter is much more than great fishing. They also do incredible Guadalupe white shark diving trips, as well as a schedule of kayak mothership trips. Check out islander-charters.com. The Islander is San Diego's leader when it comes to one and one half to five day fishing. Experience the Islander difference. Visit islander-charters.com for all the details. It's time for the Power Pro 30 Second Seminar. I like catching big fish and I like smaller reels too. How do I make sure that I have the capacity to land the big one? I fill my reels with Power Pro Max Quattro. It's 25% thinner than standard Power Pro, so you get more line on that small reel. Power Pro has a complete series of highly effective lines, including the brand new Power Pro Depth Hunter Offshore with different colors every hundred feet. Perfect for flat fall fishing. Want to learn more? Check PowerPro.com. The giant Captain Rollo's used tackle sale is back. Join us Saturday, April 30th at Seaforth Landing for our biggest sale ever. Doors open from 11 to 3. Come early for best selection, and we will see you there. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Man, I'm getting pumped on that tackle sale. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't think that I won't this, be there p- picking through some surface irons. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm fired up about that. This Saturday. Yeah. April 30th, this coming Saturday at Seaforth Landing, Seaforth Sport Fishing, right there along the, the Malacone, the boardwalk, whatever you want to call it there. Um, 11 to 3. Yep. 
get there early because there's going to be a big line to get in, and yeah. there's going to be some sweet stuff. I mean, the amount of tackle there, I don't know how many thousands of dollars worth of tackle there is. I don't need to keep saying it. I say the same thing. Like, I only see what gets brought in through the Fisherman's Landing donation yeah. spot. You know, we're, we're just. And, and you're just one of many. That's what I'm saying. We're one of places. many spots for a guy to yeah. drop there's off his drop tackle. There's drop off places in LA, yep. Orange County, and such like that. And, and several in San Diego. Dana Landing, yep. you know, C4. I mean, there's lots of places that a guy can do it. So I only see what gets dropped off at Fisherman's. Yeah. And just, just the fraction we get. It will be awesome. I mean, oh, yeah. I see the same thing all the time. Gold and good Trinidad, stuff. And, and what what a huge one of lots of lots of mid range tackle. I mean, that that's an obvious. You know, guys that are upgrading and things like that. That's the obvious donation thing. But you wouldn't believe the number of things, especially we see. I think probably at Fisherman's Landing because it's maybe the guy spot is uh, the guy that's kind of retiring from his big fish fishing time. Right. You know, up there in age, he did it. He kicked ass with it, and it was you know now okay. I'm done pulling on two hundred pounders. I'm going to donate all. This big fish tackle are all, and I'm just going to focus on fishing a little later. We see so much in the way of big rods, big reels, and now that we're in this bluefin cycle where a lot of people are trying to reinvest into bigger gear, there's so much of it. it yeah. It's going to be such. And a there's good a sale. lot of you know with Rollo too. We have a lot of people that uh, that will their tackle to Rollo when they pass away too. A lot of people uh, uh, do that. So there's a lot of great so tackle, like this year. high end, top of the line oh, yeah. stuff that's going to go for cheap. That's it. And all the money raised goes to taking kids fishing. And the That's I- the best part. The idea of the sale, too, is not... It, it is. It is. It's, I mean, you, uh, you can use whatever proper terminology, but it's cheap. I mean, they sell it cheap. The idea is to get it all sold. They, want, they don't want to pack it back up. That's exactly yeah. it. I mean, it, you know, it is yeah. not... They're Tim, not, Baker, Mike Lum, they are experts... Because they're in the tackle mm-hmm. business, they've known they've been in the tackle business for many. They know what stuff's worth. They know what it it'll sell for. Yeah, that's the right key. now. They're not trying yeah. to get every single penny no. out of it. They're just trying to hook up everybody with a rad deal and put some money in the Friends of Rollo Bank right. to send kids fishing. Right. So get over there. It's ne- this coming Saturday, April thirtieth, eleven to three only. And uh, so get there, I would say, no later than 10. Yeah, just get save me line. a spot. Yeah, for sure. Just get there <laughs> yeah, after, after when the I can show. get there after yeah. the radio show. All right, for I could sure. be there by 9.30-ish, so I'd say get there at uh, okay, 10. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, perfect. All right, let's go ahead and jump into those phones. They're packing up. They want to talk to uh, Jeremy and Al, so let's do it. You got it again. If you want to get your spot to get through, it's 213-432-1090. Let's talk to Jim. He's calling us from National City this morning. Jim, thanks for getting us started here on Let's Talk Hook Up. Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, of course, I know Al. Nash, he's the National City guy, and uh, <laughs> his father, Carol, I know real well, and Janine, his mom, I know them real well. And uh, uh, his father, Carol, lived right around the corner from me there in National City, and I know his dad was the one that got Al involved in fishing. His dad was big time fisherman at one time, and. Quite the boat guy. Always his dad always had a boat. But um, anyway, what I wanted to ask Al a couple of things. First of all, I know at one time Al, you were doing uh, trips for people in the city lakes. Are you still doing those trips in the lakes? I know you were a, a real good bass fisherman. Uh, in fact, uh, Al turned me on one time. To, uh, he does this one type of setup with that Carolina rig with a soft creature bait and about a two-ounce sliding sinker. Throw it up on the shore, drag it back in the water, stir up the water. And Al used to get uh, uh, a bit, quite a bit on that setup. There, the, are you You're giving still away his secrets uh, here, Jim? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He let to, me in on that. Yeah, you're supposed to pay for that kind of action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so well, I'm trying to help Rick. <laughs> yeah. That's a good setup. Good looking out. Hey, hey, Jim, thanks for calling in. Thanks for the good words. Yeah, appreciate um, it's the call. Always, it, It's always good to, uh, to see you and hear you. No. So what about the freshwater side of things? I mean, you said you do run trips. Is that opposite the time of the saltwater boats, or do you do it? it do you do it all year round, like you do the saltwater thing. Like, how does how does the freshwater thing mix into what you do? It's it's available all year. It mm-hmm. depends on what's going on in the saltwater calendar. You know, as I said earlier, you know, as it gets into the <clears throat> to the full swing of saltwater things, we're pretty busy with the saltwater stuff. So there's really no time for the lake. But mainly, mainly in the spring and the winter, you know, mm-hmm. um, springtime it, you get a lot of calls because people want to obviously go catch a big bass. But um, 
I have that on the books all year. You know, it, it, it's called a book. You cool. know, so I can cherry but, pick which but one. But mostly springtime. Mostly springtime yeah. and winter too. During the spoon bite in December and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's be, what I, I want. Could, to do. I love doing that. I yeah, really that sounds whack like fun. Spoon. Can yeah. that trip be kid friendly, or is that freshwater bass thing a little too little too focused? It like, depends on the kid and the personality and the age okay. of the kid. You know, yeah. I, I try to get those guys over to the bay. You know, yeah, but, right. But More it, I mean, bass fishing. I, I mean, with the water low, so there's not a lot of stuff in the water right now. But when the water's high around here, it's like the bay is amazing. It can be. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But there's kids out there that absolutely want to catch a bass, and we, t- I take them. You That's know, cool. and it's it's a chore. But it, like I said, it depends on you know what kid it is. I mean, I have an eight year old grandkid that can cast pretty much everything you put in his hand. That's so right. it, you know, it all depends on the, the the personality of the kid and what he wants to catch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, uh, great text here from Robert in Canyon Country, and he wants to know from Jeremy here, can you catch bluefin on flying fish without a kite drifting a California flyer? Um, You know, I exclusively run the kite or the balloon. Um, I have friends, I talk to guys that have ran it without a kite or without the balloon. Um, Personally, I don't have much experience with that. I just, it's so much more efficient to have that helium and the kite up for sure. Um, get that away from the boat you know the one tactic last year we kind of started getting into that really started working was keeping that thing up off the water and kind of sliding in with the sonar or with that surface visual and dropping it right on their head yeah uh, and that seemed to get bit so well. is that with the california flyer or with the dead flyer uh with a dead bait, dead I, bait yeah. yeah i usually throw the dead bait out um yeah. you know those the california flyers are they're great bait uh they, they work real good but I just there's something about that dead bait. They just yeah. they can't leave it alone. There have been some guys catching them on the life preserver, right? Just drifting them, mm-hmm. you know. And the California flyer doesn't float on doesn't its own, float. so yeah, it wouldn't sink. it wouldn't be the thing like you say. You, you'd have to fish it with some sort of aerial presentation, like Jeremy's talking about, kite, yeah. balloon, maybe even a backpack rig, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't just on its own float. So you couldn't just be drifting, put it back, and just and. Uh, and have it float up and get on. It's, you'd, you'd have to do something to keep it up on the surface. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. Well, let's jump back in the phones, Rick. You got it. How about this time we talk to Kenneth? He's calling us from Washington this morning. Good morning, Kenneth. Welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. Hey, this is uh, Dennis, actually. All right. Hey, morning, Dennis. Hey, guys. Morning. What's up, Dennis? Yeah. Hey, Alan. Jeremy. How's it going, boys? Hey, good. Dennis. Yeah. Hey, doing? I uh, fish with. Uh... All right, Jeremy. Good, man. Yeah, I. Fish with these guys a lot last year, man. That Riviera is just, I just wanted to put in a plug on that. But I wanted to ask Alan one question for Alan and one for Jeremy. Uh, uh, did I hear that right, man? $2,700. If I book it today for like an August, September <laughs> trip also? Yes. Did I hear that right? Yeah. Wow, oh, man. You spot now. Yeah, you need Ooh. to put that word out. Yeah. I mean, like Al's kind of smiling, going, "Oh man, what did I do here?" <laughs> hey, but uh, excuse me. To reiterate, so that twelve-hour trip is basically a regular twelve-hour trip up to like thirty, thirty-five miles. Okay, if the big bluefin are biting, we have a we have a big bluefin trip too, and it's forty. 200. And yes. that's when you're so. pushing offshore, burning a lot more fuel, bringing an extra right. crew member, providing flying right. fish, that kind of thing. Like yeah. the trip that inherently has thousand pounds of se- ice. Yeah, the trip that no inherently has there. several hundred dollars more of its expenses. It, right. it's, a, it's a couple more right. bucks. Right. Sure. Right. Yeah. So, but but the, the 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 twenty seven hundred dollar trip within thirty five miles, if the fish are on the nine mile bank. Or, oh, yeah. or, I'm right. not going to drive right. away from them. Yeah, right. they're, they're, right. you, you can do that. Right. The boat has everything in it, you know, yeah. all the time, flyers and everything, too. Yeah. I mean, if they're close, you know, we're not going to charge them 4200 bucks. But yeah. for the most part, there's a difference for you, sure. If you're yeah. going offshore, you got to run 20 knots. you got to get, you know, yeah, 60 especially when miles out. Settles, if it settles in at the island again, I mean, that's a... That's a haul. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Clemente, so. yeah. That's a long way. Right. Yeah. Burn a lot of fuel and stuff like that. Right. So, right. Yeah. If they're down to double 220 and, you know, yeah. they turn around and start going back down that way. Yeah. But like Jer- Jeremy said, there were a lot of fish very close 
for quite a bit of time here, and you could pull that off and like your standard 12 hour trip. Right. Yeah. 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 We got a lot of fish on the 12 hours last year, so it's, it's definitely doable. Yeah. So that's in range right now. There you go. Oh, really? Yeah. Go get them. Right, yeah. Right, Monday. right this second. Yeah, I'll be hey, out there Monday. tomorrow. So the boat got repowered, and we had it offline for three months, right? So we got it all done and got every little kink worked out and got it back online, and then the wind blew. So our first trip is, is tomorrow. Perfect. Tomorrow, which is a day when the wind's not going to blow as well. Yeah. It's going to be a little supposed to be 75 bit. degrees. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sign me up. You need an extra crew member, Holly. Should be nice. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. should be nice. Hey, thanks a lot for calling us from Washington. Appreciate that. That does free up a line at 213 432 1090. 213 432 1090. You want to get through, talk to the Captain Clowers team here, and also have a chance to win that great AFCO knife package and the case and the gloves and the, and the knife itself. Uh, that's, that's where you get through. Let's head down south right now. Mr. John Ireland's calling us from Rancho Leonel. Buenos dias. Mm-hmm. Yes, John. Hello, Rick and guests. Good well, morning. It's, uh, Good morning. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful down here. Weather's really nice. Highs in the uh, high 70s, uh, cool mornings. It's beautiful spring weather, guys. Really good. Uh, really, the good news this week, you know, the water's been real cold for this time of year. It was uh, 70, 69, 70 last week. And and the good news is that, like, in the last three days, the water uh, temp has bumped uh, a good six degrees. It's up to 76 now, consistently along the front. And uh, and outside, it's 80, 81 degrees. I'm talking about, you know, 10 miles off, something like that. So it's really, really warming up quick, which is, which is helping. And, and what's happened, uh, of course, in, in just the last couple of days as well, is the rooster fish. And... Uh, in good numbers, right? Lots of peanuts. You know, they're uh, south of the uh, marina entrance there along the jetty, and then they have a, a rock wall they've, they've built to protect the marina itself and all that. And, and in there, it's real productive. There's just loads and loads of rooster fish right now. And the, and they're catching them with sardine mostly. There's, that's what, also where they, they're making the sardine for bait for everybody, and there's plenty of those. And uh, so these uh, little small rooster fish are in there eating them. And some big ones, too, you know. There's uh, some 20, 25-pounders already. So that boat's rough. That's coming up. A lot of pompano, uh, African pompano are abundant, uh, especially off the lighthouse. The limit's for everybody. And fish, some some are some real size, seven, eight-pounders, and uh, good eating fish, those pompano. Cabrillo and Pargo on the bottom. Marlin are out on the banks, you know, and no one's showing any interest at all in going out there and, and looking for them. Um, there's huge jack crevel uh, pretty much everywhere. Big schools of them roaming around the bay. And uh, if you're tying to them, you know, it's some fun pulling on them. They're not good eating, but uh, these are big fish, you know. These are fish that are 20, 25 pounds and, uh, and really, really hard pullers, some fun. So we were out the other day and, uh, and we released, I don't know, eight or nine of them, and, and uh, had a lot of fun pulling on them. So, anyway, things are picking up. Water's warming up, and uh, and I'm going to be going out uh, tomorrow and uh, ranging around outside and see if we can find some tuna under the porpoise, and and uh, that should be happening in that 80 degree water. So. We're going to start looking heck, around. Heck Jeez, yeah, please. man. Get out there and uh, round them up for our Let's Talk Hookup tournament <laughs> coming up here uh, yeah, just long. over a month, right? Yeah, absolutely. And remember last year how many yellowfin there were? Yeah. Literally every, every boat in the tournament uh, limited every day. Pretty. Yeah. So. And, and I'm with you, John. You get onto a school of those jacks. Like you say, it might not be what you want to come home and eat on the sashimi table, but there is nothing that pulls harder oh, than a 25, so 25 pound jack or bell pull your arms off, man. That's a that's a very fun fish to get to go uh, to go to go wrestle. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And there's got to be some world record Jack Crevel in here. And I think the reason is it's really not pelagic fish, right? They're, they're living in the park, and they come out of the park, so they hang in there. And there's just loads and loads of food that a lot for to eat in there. And the real big fish, pizza that go uh, down there on Puma, and you've seen those huge. Oh food. yeah, there's big, there's big everything I mean, down yeah, there. Right. Yeah, <laughs> there's big everything in there. Yeah, That's for lot. sure. Yeah. So well, anyway, so. If somebody wanted a world record uh, Jack Crevel, I'm on the best one out there right now. Yeah. There's there a lot of fun. we had a lot of fun tugging on a lot of them around too. But anyway, we're looking forward to getting some tuna in Dorado and the rest of the species that normally are showing up this time of year. And 
like I said, if you want some rooster fish, now's a good time to come down. That's for This sure. is a beautiful time of the year in the East Cape. Uh, May, June, absolutely my favorite time of the year yeah. weather-wise and just a super kickback place. If you want to come, do you have availability, John? Yeah, we do. We do throughout the spring. So come on down and join us at 800-646-2252 or RanchoLandArrow.com. And a lot of photos. We're uploading photos every day onto the website. So. All right. So check- Great. Great, John. Hey, great to hear from you. I wish I was there. That's all I can say. It sounds like fun. I love it down there. And we'll talk to you next Sunday. See you, John. You're welcome. Thank you, gentlemen. Take care, buddy. Hey, a great text came through for the boys. This one's from Martin. Um, wants to know the best rig for fishing halibut in the bay. Do you guys like three-way swivels, reverse dropper loop, favorite baits, chovy, sardine, mackerel? What's the deal for catching a halibut in the bay? Regular halibut fishing with a sardine, you know, uh, <clears throat> reverse dropper loop, three-way swivel, flasher, even slow trolling. Reverse dropper dropping. loop means the bait's on the bottom, right? Correct. Yeah. Right, right, so right. just to clarify that. Yeah, and then the, during the, I mean... Um, when I was doing a lot of it, when the slack tide, they like to eat, I think, right at the slack, slack tide-ish, um, and you're not drifting too much. So I used to have this flasher rig. I used to throw a couple knots through there, and we just smoke them. Like a bounce ball type yeah, thing? Yeah. Yeah, a bounce ball. Yeah. yeah. But, but if you want a big one, man, straight up mackerel. You know? Mackerel. Yeah. yeah. And, and and what about pound test? What are you fishing? You have fish light 25 for them? pound test, you know. Oh, really? Wow. Meter. Yeah. Okay. You're yeah. not fishing light. Right. Well, it's it depends what's going to eat it. Well, the halibut aren't real big in the bay, but yeah, 20, 20 25 pound test. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you can get a big one in the bay. All right. Yeah. There's some big yeah, ones there's in been there. Some yeah. Big ones You've seen some there. big ones, Jeremy? Oh, yeah. Some real big ones. Yeah. Don't be afraid to you drag that real big bait. The, oh, really? Big, big mackerel or really big uh, jack smelt. If oh, you, if you think it's too big, they put a stinger on it. Yeah, uh, you'd be surprised. Like a treble string stinger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I'm, if I'm targeting, especially if I'm, you know, fishing with my buddies or something, we're going after that bigger try halibut. We'll, we'll go back. We'll try to make the biggest bait we can find and throw a, you know, stinger, treble hook in the tail, and drag them around. They're not afraid of eating a big bait, is what you're saying? Oh no, no. Those big halibut, they'll, they'll do they'll it. They'll suck down a two pound mackerel like nothing. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's cool. All right. Hey, when we Good come back. Yeah. When we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk up coming your way, including more of your phone calls. We're going to check in with the catch report, find out what's biting, and a lot more. You stay tuned. You're listening to Let's Talk Hookup, Southern California's sport fishing voice on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. This is Pete, and I hear it all the time. That Jim and Mary at Poway Valley Collision are amazing. I took my car to Poway Valley Collision, mentioned Let's Talk Hookup, and they gave us VIP treatment, fixed our car, and even gave us a special price. Believe me when I say Poway Valley Collision is worth the drive from anywhere in the Southland. At some point, your car will need a body repair, and I'm confident in saying it pays to go to Poway Valley Collision. Our listeners can save hundreds of dollars on your next car or truck repair. They work with most insurance companies, including Auto Club, MetLife, Wawanisa, and more. All you do is call Jim, Mary, or any of their team members, and they do all the rest. No hassles, just top-notch work and VIP treatment. When you take your car or truck to Poway Valley Collision, the job and experience will be top-notch. Get it fixed right at Poway Valley Collision. 14211 Garden Road in Poway. Check PowayValleyCollision.com. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Llanero. You know, the ranch is unique. It's one of the few places in the world where you can still drive ATVs up the beach. We have fishing from the beach. We have dive trips that we run to Pomo in a number of different spots. Kayaking, of course, has been real big. We were one of the first hotels to introduce kayaking. The ranch is small, you know, it's intimate, it's 34 rooms, so everyone gets to know everyone. The old saying, where everyone knows your name. Well, truly at Ranch Llanero, the employees do know pretty darn near all our guests' names. And what's even more interesting is most of the guests know each other's names. Very personal, very intimate, and a special, special environment. Two miles of beachfront, a mile on either side of the hotel. Ranch Llanero is really the last of the old-style Baja fishing resorts. 1-800-646-646. 2252 1 800 646 Baja and RanchoLanero.com. I'll personally guarantee your best fishing experience and vacation at Rancho Llanero. 
Hey, this is Rosie from Cedro Sport Fishing. Cedros Island is considered the yellowtail and calico bass fishing capital in the world, and nobody does it better than Cedro Sport Fishing. We are committed to providing first-class service to our guests and an unforgettable fishing experience. We have made a good thing even better. We are the only lodge to offer all of our guests a direct flight departing to the CBX in San Diego. Leave home in the morning and fish in the afternoon. We have a beautiful waterfront lodge and first-class meals and service. What are you waiting for? Call me at 619-772-7570 or check out cedrosportfishing.com. Book soon. Trips are going fast. Turner's Outdoorsman, Southern California's number one shooting, hunting, and fishing tackle retailer since 1971, is right in your neighborhood. Now with stores throughout Southern, Central, and Northern California, no one does it better. Turner's Outdoorsman brings you the best prices and selection, plus a knowledgeable staff that will help make your day on the water or in the field more fun. Stop by your neighborhood Turner's Outdoorsman. To find the location nearest you, check the web at turners.com and sign up for special deals and more. There are plenty of boat slips and marinas in San Diego, but there's only one Kona Kai. It's not just a place to park your boat. It's a way of life here in America's finest city. The Kona Kai Resort Spa Marina has multiple swimming pools and a private beach, waterfront restaurants, and award-winning spa, most of which is included for marina tenants. Check ResortKonaKai.com for more information. The Kona Kai Resort, much more than just a place to park your boat. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Having a great time here this morning. And as promised, it's time to find out what's biting out there. The Catch Report today is sponsored in part by our great friends at Summit. With gas prices going crazy, you certainly need to get the lowest prices available for your car or truck, and especially for your trailer boat. That's why you need to visit Summit Gasoline at the San Diego Sports Arena. It's big time, real savings. They have discount bait certificates, and you get 100 pounds of free ice with a minimum of a 35-gallon purchase. Again, it's Summit Gasoline low prices, friendly staff, and a very easy in-and-out pull-through with your boat and trailer at the San Diego Sports Low Arena. prices, how about five twenty-nine a gallon yesterday? <laughs> Dude. It's, it's a cash six, price, but it, yeah, I mean, it's, that's... It's six bucks at my house. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever it was, yeah. five, five Check your local I mean, place. Like, yeah, it's it's a huge difference. Yeah. No, yeah, that place is rad. Those guys yeah. are cool. And they do a great job. And 100 pounds of free ice, and you get the discount, Everham bait certificates, uh, yeah. people at Summit, and... No great, brainer. great everything there. So go check it out right next to San Diego Sports Arena. And let's talk to Captain Brian Woolley, Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. Good morning, Brian. Hey, Woolley. Hey, good morning, guys. What's happening this morning? How are you? Uh, doing, doing great, great man. Hey, glad, glad this wind is going to back off a little bit. And beautiful day. We're ready oh. to hear about some good fishing, at Dana Wharf. Dude, <laughs> that wind, man. That, that <laughs> thing, uh, we'll talk about that in just a second, man. We got smoked, but. Uh, you know, interesting week, I, I'd say. Just springtime, you just never know what's going to get thrown at you. You know what I mean? So uh, the, the week started off really good. We had 62-degree water along the coast here, and it was clean. There was some good downhill current. The three-quarter day right now, <clears throat> excuse me, we're still down there below San Onofre, out off Camp Pendleton there on that rockfish program. <laughs> that stuff's been day-to-day again with that current. Some of the days that we have the lighter loads, passenger loads, you know, it's allowed us to fish on the drift rather than having to uh, set up on the anchor, which is definitely the better way to fish that stuff, especially with the amount of bait that's been down there. That fish, you know, again, that, people would be, would be amazed at how much that rockfish actually moves around on that hard bottom anywhere you know that stuff just moves around all over the place so fishing on the drift was certainly better but the, the standard catches on the red the boccaccio and some other stuff like the sculpin and the white fish has been pretty much the mainstay out in that deeper water again though that current pushed it pretty hard downhill so uh you know it it was just a necessity pretty much to fish on the drift as it was it was too too tricky to fish on the anchor and then the half day stuff uh that bass fishing sliding egg sinker again was uh, the hot way to go to fish that midwater column some nice sheephead action a few days along with some other mixed fish on the bottom there. But, man, that wind on Friday, that 62-degree water on Friday, it was 53 degrees yesterday when we left, uh, left the harbor. I mean, it took a huge hit. It just plummeted our water. So, uh, and if that wasn't uh, bad oh, enough. Yeah, that's, a, that's that nine enough, degrees. That, overnight. Nine oh, overnight. Degrees. I can't believe yeah. that. Dude, that's unreal. Yeah. Yeah, insane. And then there was a little bit of red tide off the beach, and that stuff pushed in, too, with that wind. So that the stuff just it went from bad to worse overnight, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. wow. And then on top of that, you know, we got this sunshine that's coming this week, and you know what that does is that red tide. So we're 
we're just hoping that that current still pushes and we get that stuff out of there because that's all that it takes. You know, you just need time when that red tide pushes and there's nothing else that's going to push that stuff out. So yeah. as a result of that, the fishing yesterday was just, it was brutal yesterday. It was tough, cold water, red tide. So we're just, you know, fingers crossed that stuff switches up. But you know, the half day fishing during the week was pretty good up until that wind. The Fury, he was able to finally, because of the wind, kind of let him out. He got back over to Clemente this week on Thursday. You know, it was a little bit windy for him to get on his rockfish program over there, so they kind of tucked in and fished bass, and he had really good bass action for his uh, passengers on the, the live sardine. Marcus said that there was plenty of bonito to go around, so they had guys with, you know, five fish limits on both the bass and the bonito over there. And then he fished Catalina yesterday on a five-to-five -five trip. Same deal, bass, barracuda, bonito, sheephead. That's pretty much what made up his count at Catalina yesterday. And then they're back at Clemente today. So hopefully you'll see some rockfish in his count uh, today. Again, that win on the outside has just been brutal. So we'll see what shapes up for him uh, by the end of his day. So that, that's our week. We'll, uh, you know, fingers crossed. We see, I mean, any, anything's going to be an improvement at this point for us this week. So we'll uh, we'll take it here so guys yeah. will hop on a trip certainly uh check the wind weather and all that good stuff our number 949-496-5794 or uh, you can check us on the web at danawarf.com right get on. through the weather and get through the month uh don't forget it's may 1st a week from the day so uh yeah let's hope that's may right. is a, a different month than april for sure over it yeah over it. so yeah we're over some of this just the back and forth you know the flip-flop we just need some consistency so we'll we'll, we'll deal with it as we need to but uh, that's you know that was along the short of it for our week today man or this week it was it was gnarly all right well on to the next Wooly. glad to hear you guys got through it and uh we'll look forward to improving conditions and better bite and fish up at dana wharf as always great job with the report and we'll look forward to talking to you next week all right guys thanks for that we'll talk to you then see ya. thanks willie appreciate that hey we had a great text uh, uh while we're uh, waiting to continue on with gundy gunderson for our report uh this is from bob in huntington beach says good morning guys i'd like to ask uh, another question about flying the kite um on your um on the boat do you guys fly the kite from the riviera um and also i have one of the new nomad slipstream flyers um and it has hooks that can be rigged on the top or on the bottom or a trap rook do you guys have any suggestions for me that's from bob in huntington beach beach um yeah we fly the kite off the riviera uh you know i'm using the square kite with the helium balloon most of the time if the wind really picks up we'll throw the boston out uh kind of save on the helium but um and then as for those nomads um i had got a chance to take a look at them the other day uh they look like they're gonna get bit my only concern with those is how to rig on the hooks um, i can see with that hard plastic a lot of hits that don't stick um, I don't know. I, Rick, I don't know if you guys messed around in the shop yet yeah. as far as rigging, but uh, some sort of a trap rig or a hook on the bottom, I think, would get hooked up a lot better than just that single J hook up on the top, how they have them rigged out of the box. Jeremy's feeling is mine exactly. Yeah. I think no doubt that thing is going to get bites good. It looks great. I mean, it's a really good looking flying fish. It's it's relatively inexpensive in, in that world of good looking artificial like what's flyers. Inexpensive. It's like a hundred but it's a hundred bucks. I think it's like one nineteen for the biggest and like eighty bucks for the smaller one or sixty bucks for the smaller one, something like that. Don't quote me I, I could be off by a little bit, but but around there. Around but let me ask you this. If are you gonna pay a hundred and twenty bucks for a nomad or are you gonna pay two hundred bucks for a California flyer? What are you gonna fly? I, I think I mean, right this second, a California flyer, because of the, the issues exactly that he's talking it's about, not hard. that Jeremy's talking it's about. Hard. But I do think it's all about figuring out how to deliver the hooks to those things. The yeah. other thing that the Nomad has going for itself is it does float on its own. Oh. So I, we, we don't know. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to at all profess to say, oh, this is going to work or this isn't. Because that lure hasn't been out since we've really had the opportunity to fish them the way sure. we do. So jury is for sure out for me. I think where it might really hold its place is while you're in a drift and you have your dead flyer out or your California flyer out, and it's you know it's like a backpack rig. If you can float another one out off of the rod tip while you're doing anything else and pick up a bonus fish here or there, or you know you have that thing out and you take all your time positioning yourself and drop your flyer into a spot and you hook a fish, and that thing is just in the bow rod holder while you're while you're working, and boom, you pick off a double. I think it's for sure going to have its place, but I'm just like Jeremy. I don't know. The best way to deliver the hooks to their fish on that one because it is it's like a you know it's like a rapala type body it's a it's a dtx minnow body with wings on it so 
figuring out the best way to deliver the hooks to the fish is going to be the trick. And that, that's just going to come with time, and we'll, we'll get it. If it gets bit as good as we think that it will, then it's just a matter of figuring out figuring how to out how give to them the hooks, you know. Yeah. And that will come with just some time and messing around with All it. All right. Cool. We'll keep you updated. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I, it, it's got a spot. For sure it does. All you right. just got to figure out what that spot is, you know. All right. The other interesting thing with that is the possibility of being able to cast it. Yeah. Oh. Um, you know, if you're, especially like Rick was saying, if you're on a fish, you know, boat stationary and something pops up, be able to kind of lob something out that's going to float and give that flying fish presentation away from the boat. Especially it's maybe the smaller one, huh? Yeah. 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 So. I know the, the boys in the shop were messing with it the other day. It... it we all said the same thing. It looked better than we thought it was going to do. In okay. the package, it was kind of, ah, I don't know. And the guys were standing on the dock, casting basically the length of the searcher. You know, they're standing there and winding things back. And it looks good. I mean, I, I don't think it's ever going to be a, a lure that you would cast like a surface iron. It's not going to be nearly as aerodynamic as that. But it looks man, it looks pretty good. I, right. I mean, I, I, I think that the jury is just still just out. Just have it to wait and see. It definitely looks good enough that it's going to work. We'll just figure Give it, it out. A try. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to figure out, again, how to get the hooks to them and, and the right scenario for it. But it's not a gimmick, for sure. It's, All right. It's, it's got its worth. All right, so legit. I think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, Speaking of legit, let's talk to the legit uh, surf guy, our surf guru extraordinaire, Gundy Gunderson. What's up, Gundy? Hey, Gundy. <laughs> What's happening, guys? Good morning. L- legit. <laughs> legit. <laughs> I got a legitimate spring bite, that's for sure. Really pumping on all cylinders now, Pete. We're getting orange mouth in the thing. Uh, we got the croakers biting, some spot fins showing up this week. And, of course, you know, the halibut fishing just keeps plugging along. We'll start up north at hook, line, sinker. Good fishing for a number of species. Uh, more spawning, barred perch. The guys were reporting ripe fish this week. The stretch from graveyards to Carpinteria. It's been a good one. Silver Strand, Fifth Street, all these classic barred perch spots are starting to produce. It's late, you know, but it's happening. So we'll just go with that. Lots, Like I said, uh, lots of fish in that one-pound class and a few two-pounders. Also, a uh, legal 34-inch white sea bass was taken off Refugio up there. An eight-pound striped bass was taken off Goleta Beach. They report lots of halibut. But on the northern front, lots of lots of shorts. So he, the guy at the shop was saying maybe five fish you get illegal, so you keep that in mind. And uh, some good bass fishing reported by Wiley's off County Line, Leo Carrillo. Lots of legal fish in the mix. I think four pounds was the top one. Take uh, squid has been the best bait. Shrimp, uh, that fresh market shrimp they sell up there has also been really good. A couple of four-pound class yellowfin croaker were also checked into the shop this week. Uh, the bass fishing is coming, starting to come alive in the reef, and that's a, that's a good sign. They had some good bass catches also off to Mescal there. Uh, and like I said, tons of halibut, but just a little bit lacking in legal up there. Big fish reported good halibut action. Cherry Beach, uh, Shoreline Drive was a good stretch there. The grunion always run in there, and that's what's uh, fueling this thing. Uh, same thing, lots of shorts, but plenty, plenty of legals in here. More fish to 28 inches. Uh, you know, they like to use those drop shot zoom flukes up there, or you can also fish them on a dart head. Uh, the croakers also come into life. Real good catches off seal beach. Mostly chunky yellow fin, but a few spot fin and more spot fins starting to show there. Lugworms, mussel, the top bait. Catch them tackle reported good halibut fishing. In the harbor and on the beaches, a 14-pound fish was taken at the harbor mouth on cut sardine. Another eight-pound fish was taken off river jetties on a flash minnow. Uh, some nice croakers also showing off the piers. Hogan's reported several legal halibut taken off Doheny and Hole in the Fence. Uh, my buddy's kid's been on that grunion run in there, and there's some short white sea bass mixed with some legal halibut and short halibut, but real fishy in there and something to keep your eye on. Pacific Coast finally reported more halibut catches, top fish, 35 and a half inch taken in 10 feet of water in Mission Bay. There's just a bunch of nice fish in the bays there, Pete. Another uh, shop regular had two 25-inch fish uh, fishing with his son on the shore in the lagoons with sardine 
and um, catches in San Diego Bay. They're just a lot oh, of quality oh. halibut shallow right now, and it's time, just the best time to go after time them. Time to go fishing, man. It's spring. <laughs> Absolutely the best time to go I try to keep fishing. it short, Pete, but it's tough in the spring, man. Oh, There's boy, lots of going on, on, man. Hey, Gundy Gunnison, you do such a great job. We sure appreciate your time, and we will talk to you next Sunday. Sounds good. Love doing it, Pete. I'll All talk right. to you guys next Thanks, week. Gundy. Thanks, Gundy. All right, well, that wraps up the Catch Report today. Hey, we're going to remind you the spring is here and it's time to hit the beach for all your surf fishing needs. Check out surffishtackle.com. Also, the CCA California and Bill Varney are teaming up uh, again this summer for several of those on the beach surf fishing clinics. You'll find all the details at fishthesurf.com. When we come back, we got a lot more Let's Talk Hookup coming your way. Another full hour of your phone calls and text. If you want to get through, it's 213 432 1090. More Let's Talk Hookup coming your way on the Let's Talk Hookup app and the mightier 1090. ESPN Radio. Shimano has done it again. An amazing lever drag two speed reel at an affordable price. It's Speedmaster 2. The extremely durable high performance Speedmaster 2 with high maximum drag power and a smooth ultra wide range of drag adjustability is an absolute fish fighting machine. Its rigid Hagani body prevents misalignment of moving parts under the heaviest loads. Plus a spare drag cam is included for optimal use with monofilament lines. The speed Speedmaster is now available in four models, 12, 16, 20, and 25. This is the perfect reel for the angler looking for a powerful, lightweight, smooth casting reel for tuna or other powerful saltwater game fish at a more affordable price. Nothing in its class can match the Shimano Speedmaster 2, built to provide high-end performance and dependability in a compact, lightweight frame. Get the Shimano Speedmaster 2 lever drag reel at your local Shimano dealer. Check Shimano.com for all all the details. For over 30 years, Sea Falcon has been manufacturing the finest handmade jigs and plugs, utilizing superior components and hand painted finishes. Sea Falcon lures are made in Japan and are based on hand carved originals, utilizing the highest level of quality and attention to detail. Gamakatsu's premium assist hooks are ideal to pair with Sea Falcon lures, providing you with one of the highest quality lure combinations on the market. When you're shopping for premium jigs and plugs to chase the fish of a lifetime, look no further than Sea Falcon. The future comes standard at your San Diego County Ford dealers, so swing on by and check out the legendary Ford F-150, the smart and capable Ford Ranger, and the all-new Ford Bronco Sport. New inventory is arriving daily, and your San Diego County Ford dealer is here to help you build and order the truck or SUV of your dreams. Want to make sure you get the right truck to tow your boat? They'll help you order the right configuration to meet your needs. Want to make sure you get the right SUV to haul your gear on your next adventure? They've got you covered there, too. Escape, Edge, Bronco Sport, Explorer, and Expedition. They've got the SUV that's perfect for you. If it isn't on the lot, they'll order it and get you exactly what you need. They want your trade. So swing by your nearest San Diego County Ford dealer or visit buyfordnow.com to see all the great deals. They'll be glad to hook you up. Hayden Lane here from Fast Lane Kayaking, and I got to tell you about all the rad new stuff we have in the shop, like the fully updated new line of Hobie inflatable kayaks, the iTrek series. Hobie took the best-selling i11s and made it even better, then added new models like it, like the new iTrek 9 that weighs just 37 pounds, fully rigged, packs into a small bag with wheels, and fits just about anywhere. And on the water, this thing performs featuring a super wide and flat hole shape that is stable and an elevated beach chair style seat that is comfortable. Or the all new Hobie Mirage Lynx. Inspired by the shape of the inflatable kayaks, Hobie made a durable and ultralight hard top model. It's the missing link. It looks like a hybrid of a stand up paddleboard and a kayak. And the best part, at just 45 pounds, the hole weighs about half as much as similar sized kayaks. And it's stackable. Pile them up on your roof rack or your truck bed. You gotta see this thing. Stop by the shop right on the water in Dana Landing Marina in Mission Bay. Or check us out online at fastlandkayaking.com.